Hello friends, uh, let us see the bone scapula. So it is a flat bone, bone of the upper limb and it is a flat bone lying just behind or posterior to the thoracic wall. It is attached with the clavicle with the acromion process and form the acromioclavicular joint which is a flat variety of the joint and it is also attached with the uh, humerus right it is attaches with the humerus and it form the shoulder joint which is a ball and socket variety of the joint let us see its feature first then we will determine the sides so as you can see it is a triangular bone it having a three borders and three angles uh, this is the inferior this one is the inferior angle This one is the superior angle and this one is the lateral angle. Okay, so this is the superior angle, this is the inferior angle and this one is the lateral angle. You can see here, this lateral angle, it consists of one rounded cavity which is known as the glenoid cavity so this cavity should lies on the lateral side where it gives attachment to the humerus which form the shoulder joint the humerus should be lies on the lateral side so this is the lateral angle this is the superior and this is the inferior angle of the scapula borders as you can see this is here there will be the attachment of the humerus this should be the lateral border okay this is the lateral border and this one is the medial border this one is the medial border the lateral border is thick and the medial border is thin uh, and this one is the superior border you can see here this border is the superior border this one okay so it having three borders, three angles, it having the three processes. Now let us see the processes. This one process, this this one, the small crow beak like process, this is this one, just above the glenoid cavity or glenoid tubercle this one is the coracoid process this is known as the coracoid process okay this one is the coracoid process the another process here here you can see here this one is the acromion process this process is acromion process okay and this process the acromion process just uh, attaches with this process and, and this process is known as the spinous process. Okay. So this is the spinous process. This one. Which attaches with the surface. One of the surface of the scapula. This one is the spinous process. This is the acromion process. And this is the coracoid process. It having a uh, three processes. Now surfaces, it having a two surfaces. Now how we determine the anterior and the posterior? The anterior surface is concave and smooth. You can see this is the anterior surface which is concave and smooth. It having a ridges on the anterior surface. So this is the anterior surface and the posterior surface is convex and in the upper part, the posterior surface it gives attachment to the spinous process so where the spinous process is attaches this surface is known as the posterior surface okay so these are about the features of the scapula after knowing about the features of the scapula we can determine the side of the scapula right so to determine the side of the scapula uh, like this so 
the anterior surface is con concave the posterior surface is convex and it gives attachment to the uh, spinous process of the scapula so this should lie on, lies on the posterior side this should lie on the anterior side now the glenoid cavity this one the glenoid cavity should lies on the lateral side this should lie on the lateral side okay like this this should lie on the lateral side now here will be the attachment of the humerus so you can see this one is of the left side right like this this one is of the left side the opposite one will be somehow here like this there will be the attachment of the humerus here here humerus it attaches like this here okay so this is the midline this one is the midline of an individual here acromion process there will be the clavicle here like this there will be the manubrium, manubrium and sternum is here right so this bone is of the left side anterior surface and the lateral end okay so let me tell you quickly about the borders this one is the lateral border which is thick this one is the medial border which is thin this is the superior border which is thin again the angles this one is the inferior angle this is the superior angle and or we can say uh, the angle lies between the lateral and uh, medial border this is the inferior angle between the superior and uh, medial border superior angle and this one is the lateral angle lateral angle consists of the glenoid cavity and uh, surfaces this is the anterior surface which consists of the ridges and it is concave this is the posterior surface and uh, it is convex and it gives attachment to the spinous process this is the spinous process okay now uh, angle uh, the processes this is the coracoid process and uh, this is the acromion process and this one is the spinous process spinous process attaches with the posterior surface uh, two features are remaining uh, this one uh, this one <clears throat> on the superior on the superior border just at the root of the coracoid process here this is the root of the coracoid process and here at the superior border on the on its lateral side here there is one notch is present which is known as the supra which is known as the supra clavicular notch so this is the supra clavicular notch and sometimes this notch get ossified and it form a supra clavicular foramen also so this one is the supraclavicular notch and this one this entire this one this is known as the spinoglenoid notch this is the spinoglenoid notch between the spine and the glenoid cavity this is known as the spinoglenoid notch right so this is about the features and uh, the side determination of the scapula now let us see the attachments on the scapula so first of all on the surface the anterior surface in the medial to third portion here it gives attachment to the subscapularis muscle here there will be the attachment of the subscapularis muscle on the anterior surface on the posterior surface as you can see posterior surface is divided into two part right this uh, by the spine this this portion is known as the supraspinous fossa this portion is known as the infraspinous fossa so here the supraspinous fossa gives attachment to the supraspinatus muscle on its lateral to third portion here on its lateral to third portion up to here and the infraspinous 
fossa it gives an attachment to the infraspinatal muscle at the lateral to third part this anterior surface as it is concave it is also known as the subscapular fossa and it gives attachment to subscapularis the subscapularis is multipinnate muscle this one is the multipinnate muscle and because of the multiplication multipinnate attach arrangement this striations are formed this striations on the anterior surface is formed by the subscapular subscapularis muscle which is multipinnate in nature now attachment on the medial border medial border gives attachment to the on its coastal surface towards the anterior side here it gives attachment to the serratus anterior serratus anterior arises as a eight digitation uh, the first digitation is lies from superior angle to here here there will be the first digitation the second and uh, third digitation is from the spinous process to here up to the inferior angle first digitation from the superior angle to the spinous process here the first digitation second and third from here to the inferior angle second and third and remaining five digitations they are present at the inferior angle so serratus anterior arises as a eight digitation first here second third here and the four to eight will be here and uh, on the posterior side the posterior surface medial border uh, it receives insertion of three muscle near the superior angle there is the insertion of levator scapulae muscle from here just op opposite the root of the spine there is insertion of rhomboidus minor muscle and lower to third portion there is insertion of rhomboidus major muscle on the medial border on the lateral border upper to third part here gives origin to the teres minor muscle and lower part it gives lower one third portion it gives in uh, origin to teres major muscle so the medial border it receives the insertion lateral border it gives the origin here one thing you should remember in uh, the substance between teres minor one now passes and this now is known as the circumflex scapular now now near the inferior angle here there are the origin of the latissimus dorsimus now uh, here you can see this is the glenoid cavity above and below at the glenoid cavity there is a there are two tubercles one tubercle is there one is above and one is below this is known as the supraglenoid tubercle this one and this one known as the infraglenoid tubercle the supraglenoid tubercle this one it gives uh, origin to the long head of the biceps muscle and this one it gives origin to the long head of the triceps muscle so long head of the biceps arises from the supraglenoid tubercle long head of the triceps arises from the infraglenoid tubercle okay now let us see the uh, spinous process spinous process having the two lips this one is the upper lip this one is the lower lip this upper lip of the spinous process as well as the medial border of the acromion process towards the uh, superior angle this is the medial border this two structures it gives and it receives the insertion of the trapezius and here the lateral border of the acromion process and the inferior lip of the spine this two structures they uh, gives origin to the lateral 
as well. Here on the lateral border of the acromion process, this portion, it gives origin to the, the lateral fibers of the deltoid which are the multipinnate fibers. These are the multipinnate fibers of the deltoid muscle. Okay. Uh, now attachments on the coracoid process on the tip of the coracoid process on the medial side there is attachment of the coracobrachialis muscle and uh, on the lateral side there is attachment of the uh, short head of the biceps and on the medial border there is attachment of the uh, pectoralis minor muscle so three muscles are there pectoralis minor coricobrachialis and short head of the biceps uh, it also gives attachment to the three ligaments here above on the superior surface it gives attachment to, to the coricoacromian ligaments here on the posterior side it gives attachment to the coricoclavicular ligament coronoid and trapezoid part of the coricoclavicular ligament and uh, here uh, it gives attachment to the corico humeral ligament with the humerus so three ligaments are there three muscles are there on the coracoid process here uh, there is a suprascapular notch here there is a one uh, ligament is there which convert this notch into the foramen which is known as the transverse ligament here and uh, from this foramen uh, then uh, supra scapular now the supra scapular now it passes below this uh, transverse ligament and uh, the arteries and the veins they will pass above this uh, ligament so navy under the bridge and further now now below the uh, ligament and the arteries and the veins above the army above the bridge are the passes arteries passes above the ligament transverse ligament which convert the uh, notch within the to the foramen like this and uh, this is the transverse ligament here the now is passes and uh, supra scapular now just above the scapula so supra scapular scapular now and the artery and vein passes above it another ligaments are there on the uh, surface on the borders of the glenoid cavity there will be the uh, ligament which is known as the glenoid labrum which depends the cavity of the shoulder joint there will be the glenoid labrum is there Okay, so this is about the scapula. Uh, the most commonly asked question by our questions of the scapula is this one, coracoid process. This coracoid process is which type of the epiphysis? So the answer is atavistic type of the epiphysis. Coracoid process, right? And... Uh, this one coracoid process okay another questions is nerves and arteries related to the scapula so here uh, within the substance of teres major there will be the circumflex scapula artery passes and uh, here from the supra scapular nose supra scapular now and uh, arteries and vein passes so these structures, two structures, they lie close to the scapula and uh, these are the most commonly asked question about the scapula. If uh, your viva go more in detail, they will ask you about the movements of the scapula, the protraction, retraction and the rotatory movements and they may also ask about the axis of the scapula. You can see here. This is the lower lip of the scapula and here this is known as the deltoid tubercle of the scapula and uh, here is the axis of the scapula here from anterior to posterior 
here it passes from anterior to the posterior through the deltoid tuber and the scapula suppose here is the axis and the scapula rotate around this axis like this the rotation occur around this axis so this may be asked but this is a pg question they may not be asked to the mbbs student so this is about the scapula if you like my channel and like my videos please subscribe my channel and uh, hit the like button thank you